Our story today began at Malaysia's capital, Kuala Lumpur, where we flew on Singapore Airlines Boeing 737-800, an aircraft that was never meant for them, but COVID had other plans. A thunderstorm welcomed us at Singapore, but a journey now to Chennai will begin from Terminal 2. Hello and welcome to Changi Airport in Singapore, where our aircraft was parked at Terminal 2. It's just past 7 pm. A line of Singapore Airlines alongside a Lufthansa Boeing 747 and a Swiss Boeing 777. Two airlines from a good European presence at Changi. Ranked 9th busiest in the world for international passengers, Changi is home to four passenger terminals, of which Singapore Airlines uses Terminal 2 and Terminal 3. Looking at the ever-busy departure display, our flight to Chennai was operating out of Terminal 3. Well, let's head to Terminal 3 now. Navigating through Changi is as easy as it can get. The airport provides a free train service between Terminals 1, 2 and 3, with the exception being Terminal 4, for which it offers free shuttle service. These trains, known as sky trains, are a driverless mode of transport. This terminal opened in 2008 is the most modern when compared with the other three. There are also plenty of retail outlets to choose from. If you're someone who loves shopping, chances are you'll forget you're in an airport. One of the things you love about Singapore is its cultural diversity which makes it a truly global city. Here's a display of plants and flowers significant during the Muslim festival of Ramadan. If your taste buds are craving for some local delicacies, there is a 1960s themed food court called Singapore Food Street offering local and Asian dishes with Burger King right on one corner. At Changi, every terminal has gates prefixed with an alphabet. Terminal 3 is assigned gates with A and B, making it easier to find where your gates are. Since we checked in our bags and got our boarding passes for our flight to Chennai at Kuala Lumpur itself, there was just security check left. More about that when we head to the gate. Our flight was assigned gate A10. Saving us a long walk, our gate is just a few meters away. Our gate was still closed and about 15 minutes away from being opened. This being a turnaround flight, the same crew operate both the inbound and the outbound flights to Chennai, making it a long night for them. Unlike many airports which have a common security check for all the gates, Singapore implements a gate security check system where each gate or sometimes a couple of gates together have individual security check area, which I think is very helpful when passengers have a tight transfer time between flights. Having completed security, there's another checkpoint before we could enter the waiting area. There she is, our A350 taking us to Chennai, hiding behind the aerobridge. The seats are arranged in a way to maximize the carpet space and are split into zones for boarding. But I wonder if 300 plus passengers could fit in here. In line with SQ's importance for following procedures, boarding for economy was called row-wise, starting from behind. Here's our aircraft, Singapore Airlines A350-900, registered as 9VSHD, flying us to Chennai. Chennai is one of the lucky few cities to see SQ operate their Boeing 737 MAX, 
78710 as well as a A350 aircraft. Singapore Airlines on most flights provides complimentary headphones packed in a Ziploc pouch for those traveling on economy. This aircraft has 40 business class seats in a one-to-one configuration split in two cabins where each seat has aisle access. Hello. Thank you. Hello, good evening. Economy class with a total of 263 seats is split into two cabins in a 333 configuration. These gray and blue colored seats add to the calming cabin environment. These offer a generous seat pitch of 32 inches and a width of 18 inches. Every seat is also provided with a pillow and a blanket. Singapore Airlines operates the A350 in three different configurations. We are flying on the regional A350 which carries 303 passengers in two classes. Doors closed and beacon light blinking. We are moments away from pushback. The airline's safety video is very travel oriented. Introduced in 2017, a cabin crew member takes us around Singapore while demonstrating safety procedures. Innovative to say the least. It is normal for the bag to not fully inflate. This airframe is powered by two Rolls-Royce Trent XWB, an engine developed exclusively for the A350. For departure, we were assigned runway 02R, which is at the other corner of the airport. At present, Changi has 3 parallel runways of which 1 and 3 are operational. The middle runway is closed as part of the construction of the massive Changi East project which involves building terminal 5 spreading over 1080 hectares. It seemed like we were taking the road to Chennai. The runway end nowhere to be seen. After 25 minutes aligning with 02R, only a strip of runway between us and experiencing the magic of flying What a magnificent view of Singapore Changi Airport as we depart expecting to cover 1816 miles in 3 and 1/2 hours. Singapore airspace is so compact that soon after departure we enter Malaysian airspace. In contrast to the darkness outside, the cabin lights were now being turned on. Let me now show you the features of our seat. Starting from the top, these seats are equipped with 11.6 inch adjustable monitor having a USB port along with it. There is an adjustable cup holder with a storage space for very small sized items next to it. These Recaro manufactured seats have a foldable and an adjustable tray table with the mirror being a thoughtful feature along with a cup holder mold. The seat back pockets are compartmentalized into four different sections. Inside the literature pocket were a safety information card, an air sickness bag, a Wi-Fi card, and it was nice to get hands on a physical grist shop magazine adding to the features was a universal power outlet in between every seat on top next to the ife screen was a coat hook on every seat to complete the features was a six way adjustable headrest with a brown tone headrest cover common despite the color of the seat these seats offer a good legroom the overhead panel had reading lights but no air vents and a digital screen displaying seat belt signs our flight path took us over the illuminating kuala lumpur a city we departed barely 5 hours ago the team of 11 cabin crew on this flight 
began meal service starting with pre-ordered meals. There were three options, two non-veg and one veg on today's sector. I had gone for the vegetarian option with the mains having three dishes, avial which is a mixed vegetable and coconut sauce, plain rice and a mix of black-eyed beans with brinjal, all of them well cooked and tasting good. Accompanying it was bread with butter and a choice of beverage where I had gone for a simple orange juice. Cruising at 40,000 feet up in the air, a sea of green darts, you could look down upon hundreds of fishing boats between the coasts of Indonesia and Malaysia. What's a good meal without dessert? A vanilla ice cream to top it off. These manufactured by local company others are only offered on outbound Singapore flights. The two-pin headphones which we picked up just before boarding are of an okay quality. Let me now show you what Singapore Airlines offers on their entertainment front. The IFE, powered by Tails, is displayed on a 11.6 inch screen. An interactive 3D map, powered by Geofusion, which has quite a number of modes to choose from, is available. Touch is smooth and response is at its quickest, a top-notch product overall. There are a whopping 1800 movies in a variety of categories as well as TV shows, audio and games to choose from, well armed for a long haul flight. Back in 2021, SQ launched the e-shopping facility on the A350, offering more than 4000 products, the same which is mirrored in the physical booklet kept at our seat pocket. More than halfway through our journey flying westwards, the cabin was once again dimmed, with a full belly amidst darkness outside, time to reflect on our virtues. It looked an empty cabin with just 74 passengers on this sector, though the outbound flight from Chennai to Singapore would be packed. As the cabin crew were making the final preparation for landing, we were assigned runway 07 and were entering Chennai from the southeast. Now fasten your seat belts and enjoy my beautiful city shining at night. After a flying time of 3 hours and 35 minutes, we've landed at Chennai. We stayed in the aircraft for more time than expected because of an issue that is becoming common at Chennai airport. There was a delay, reason for which our captain would explain. We are currently holding a position uh, just because our parking bay is uh, currently occupied by another company aircraft. Uh, however, we expect uh, about uh, 15 to 20 minutes. Thank you for your understanding and patience. About 30 minutes after touchdown, we finally parked at Terminal 3, which at the time of filming was used as an international terminal. Thoughts on the flight? A good overall experience flying on Singapore Airlines. Right from checking in at the airport up till now, the crew seemed happy and very proactive. Their economy class product, one of the best there is. They gave me every reason to believe they're up to the best. After a brief 90 minutes on the ground, this A350 delivered in 2019 would be back in the air, heading to Singapore. Here's Thai's Boeing 787 parked next to us, which has a daily flight to Bangkok. We are walking through the old international terminal, known as T3, whose operations have been shifted to the new integrated terminal called T2. This old terminal stands to be demolished, giving way to a new one. There is also a dedicated video of the new integrated terminal on our channel, if you wish to watch. Thank you for joining in. Hope you all enjoyed flying along with us. See you soon on another aviation experience.